the Knight of Discs is quite different from most of the other knights. He's less concerned with battle and conquest, and instead appears to be admiring the wonder of the natural world, of which he is very much concerned with here. The Rider Waite card of the King of Pentacles shows something akin to a Lord of the Earth. He's covered with abundance, and a lot of this is the natural world as well, like what we have seen, and he admires everything of which has been born out of this world. Now, this card is the fiery part of Earth, it is fire of Earth, and so we might think immediately of things like volcanoes and, uh, you know, earthquakes and natural disasters, forest fires, and yet it can also be the activity of the Earth as a giver of life, which is how Crowley describes this. And so, just as the sun, of course, provides light um, for life to actually grow up on the Earth, uh, we put our intention into the Earth to create harvest and make a fertile Earth. We are inspired by the natural wonder of the world to cultivate it and to help it to grow. And so, in many regards, the fire in Earth can be our spark of uh, caring for our world and also the spark of life itself in that seed, you know, in that potential of life in the actual Mother Earth itself. We can see this as well with the Tree of Life, where he is Shokmar in the world of Isaiah, the world of making, and so he is will and force and energy put through there, and he's focusing it very much in the things of the physical world, what he can create, what he can cultivate out of the Earth, and see that it is beautiful and see that it is good, like he's paused here and he's looking out at that, that vista of the sun, and he is admiring the poetry of reality. He's sensing that feel of wonder that we get, you know, when we look at the sunrise or the sunset and all of the beauties of the world and, you know, we're bowled over by it. It just feels magic in some regard. That is what he is sensing here. And his horse also has come to a rest. And you'll notice that his horse, it's a shire horse. It's not a horse of which is done up for battle. It's got no armour or fearsome insignia on it or anything like that. And its posing here is said to represent it being at rest. Its feet are firmly planted on the ground. It looks at peace. And as Crowley uh, lets us know in the Book of Thoth, because its feet are planted on the ground, it's different from the other knights of which rear up, you know, and they're charging into battle and all this type of thing, uh, where this one has, has come to rest. And we also see that he's not a knight or a king of whom he's going into battle from the position of his helmet. So his helmet's not covering his, his face, um, so he's not expecting an attack. He's got it raised up so that his face is free to admire this beauty of the world. And of course, from the perspective of a knight, that would be a vulnerable position to have your face uncovered like that. And so obviously he feels perfectly safe and at home in this place where he is. And upon his helmet, is the crest of the stag and uh, this is a very powerful symbol and has many different meanings and of course with this being a very agricultural image we go back to some of the earliest deity archetypes uh, of which always had the horns like the stag and the deer such as Cernanos and it's even believed that some of our early ancestors may use these horns as a type of headdress perhaps to actually feel themselves as part of the spirit of that animal or so on, such as those headdresses found at the archaeological site of Star Car. We also see in um, medieval folklore a strange image of stags eating snakes or stamping on serpents to kill them, representing overcoming the devil, of course, overcoming the dark forces of the world, and when they eat the serpent, it was symbolic of them receiving uh, the wisdom of the serpent, receiving its spirit. And so they would also shed their physical skin, of which would be old age and death and illness, because of course this is what the serpent is seen to have done. And so it represents something of man's search for meaning and for spiritual uh, enlightenment, such as we see with the pursuit of the white heart, the white stag in uh, folklore and mythology. The stag could represent the chasing of new adventures 
of new experiences of that wonder of the world, which is why it is never actually caught in this folklore. It is something that cannot be captured. There is a hidden nature underneath it. And of course, in a more simple way, the stag symbology can also be of uh, a male sexuality, uh, such as we see with the god Pan and various other uh, nature deities of that respect, going right back uh, to Cernanos yet again. It really is quite a multifaceted symbol there. We'll also see that uh, he's not carrying a sword or any type of battle implement at all. In fact, in his hand is an implement known as a flail, of which is a threshing tool. It's something of which would be swung at the grain in order to loosen the husks for harvest. It's a very ancient tool going back to some of the earliest uh, generations of farmers of which were often grain harvesters. And we also see this in ancient Egyptian folklore where the symbol of the flail associated with the pharaoh, of whom of course here is the, the knight, the king, symbolises his ability to provide for his people, to give them a, a large and fruitful harvest. And so it's a really positive symbol. We've probably actually seen this on the famous sarcophagus of Tutankhamun, of which he holds the symbols of the crook and the flail, the shepherd's crook and the threshing flail. And these are symbols also of the deity Osiris, of which we have seen many times throughout uh, the Thoth Tarot. And he as well is a god of agriculture, of fertility, like we've seen with those horns, and also of a type of resurrection, which is of course something that our knight here would see all around him. He, he looks at the sun, he sees it go down at night and come up again in the morning, and his harvest, of course, he sees it come and go with the yearly cycle. And he holds his shield towards the sun as if to... Actually, it looks like it's literally being warmed by the rays of the sun of which are emanating from this. And so it's impregnating it with the energy of the sun. Now, whatever is actually on this shield is hidden from us, perhaps suggesting, of course, that the secrets of nature are never truly revealed to us, of course. Like we saw there, there is that hidden aspect that can never be captured, like the, the white stag. It can be chased, it can be seen, glimpsed at. And perhaps sometimes we can unpick and attempt to understand small things about it, but it will never reveal its true face to us. And yet if we looked at what this symbol most likely would be, some have suggested it would be the Earth Pentacle of the Golden Dawn, of course, would be a hidden symbol in itself as well, so it fits in with that. And it's a simple interwoven uh, pentacle, of course, and as above and so below. It represents the spirits of nature coming together to create the, the manifested world, which is the harvest that we can literally see happening around us on this card. It's an interesting card, this. It really represents, in some ways, the rest after the toil in the fields. But of course, it would be a hard work that he's done. He's not going to have an easy time threshing this harvest, just as he hadn't had an easy time planting the seeds in the first place. And yet he knows that it's a wonderful thing. He knows that it is good. And so he has this deep you know, respect and connection with the earth beneath his feet. And so, when you actually draw the card, it's one of abundance, of course. And it's one of taking a great ownership and an understanding of abundance. So it's a card of wealth. And it's a card of uh, a great security, because one knows that when that sun sets, it's going to come back up again. And one knows if they've planted the seeds and put that hard toil in, that one day... And they too can sit back like this and admire the fruits of their labour and give thanks and see the beauty and wonder of all of the things around them. It's a really good card and to draw it certainly represents good things to come in the harvest of your own manifestations of which you have brought into your own life. <laughs> 